Hi, I'm Kaylee Rossing, and you're watching Tennis Ninja TV. Aloha guys, welcome back to Tennis Ninja TV. I am Shane Cash and the Tennis Ninja. Guys, I'm at Wailaiki 5 Complex. You're probably wondering why in the world is Tennis Ninja there? I have a treat for you that's actually never been done before. I'm about to take you through some history in terms of tennis in Hawaii. Guys, this has been mostly Albert's life, but he's been nice enough to share uh, a lot of the past history and relics that make up tennis in Hawaii as he covers that through his newsletter on amstringing.com. You can visit his website to check that out, but guys, we're going to take you through a video version of that today, so I hope you're really excited because you're going to see some history maybe you've never gotten the chance to see before in person. So guys, give your full attention and respects to Albert. He does a lot for the state of Hawaii in terms of tennis, but for today, he's going to talk about past history in the sport. Guys, you're going to see old relics from posters of old tournaments to trophies, pictures of players that have been famous playing in the pros, old rackets, you're gonna see it all guys right here on Tennis Ninja TV. So guys, again, I just wanted to say hi, enjoy the video and this treat that I bring to you today. Albert Morata, NAM Stringing. Hey Shane, how's it going? Come on in. When I first played tennis uh, back in 74, I, um, right away, I was exposed to my first professional tournament. Not me playing, but um, I was actually a ball boy in the Avis Challenge Cup in 1976. So, uh, here I have some of the things that I collected. There you can see that the players that were invited for this event, there were eight players, Alexander, Ash, Borg, Labor, Anastasi, Newcomb, Ramirez, and Rosewall. I mean, those are top-notch players. Uh, back then, uh, there was no ATP, so, it was the World Championship Tennis, and this event was a $320,000 event. So it was a round-robin format where they divided the eight players into two flights, and they basically played within their flight, and they um, eventually had a, uh, the top four, and they played off, and eventually there was a winner. What was kind of unique about this event was prize money was given out to the winner. If you lost the match, you got nothing. So I thought that was kind of neat when I researched this. And like I said, I was a ball boy. So on the finals, it was uh, up there, Ash versus Nastasi. And um, for that particular match, I was actually the scoreboard recorder. Uh, back in the day, we had to put numbers in slots on a wooden scoreboard. So I was one of those guys sitting behind the scoreboard, making sure that the score was correct. And uh, of course, at the end of the match, I. Uh, took that as my souvenir so and I have an autograph cover with some some of the players that played so that was my very first tournament this is the Island Holidays Pro Tennis Classic it was actually played uh, from 1974 to 1984 but what stood out this 1978 year um, was that oh it was played at the Royal Lahaina Resort so what made this uh, year unique was the way uh, the eventual winner won this match. Um, and I'll get more into that at the end. So this Island Holidays Pro Tennis Classic was a $100,000 tournament. Uh, like I said, it was played at the Royal Lahaina Tennis Resort and it had a capacity of about 2,400 people. So it was the biggest uh, stadium in the state of Hawaii. I think it is still today um, being that size. The article that I wrote is called The Tale of the Maui Mir Miracle. Um, it was won by Bill Scanlon, and he was a lucky loser that year. So if you don't know what a lucky loser is, it's the player that went through qualifying and lost in the very last match to get into the main draw. But what happened was someone in the main draw pulled out. Um, and so they drew his name out of a bowl and he literally got back into the tournament. And then he ended up beating um, all these guys and he ended up winning the tournament. And it's only happened, I think, nine times in the history of ATP events. So, um, yeah, so it was, uh, he's in the record books for that. All right, so next we have right above the Island Holidays Pro Tennis Classic is the Nissan Hawaii Tennis Circuit. Uh, I have a program there that's dated 1991. This event actually took place from 1983 to 1994. And uh, it was usually played in the fall. 
and it was a little circuit. It was a circuit of about four or five tournaments that played on all the islands: Oahu, Kauai, Maui, and Big Island. Uh, and it was a fifty thousand dollar event, thirty two man draw. You know, I can't remember all the winners for the each uh, tournament, but some notable players that were on on that circuit. Um, Vince Van Patten, Glenn Michibata, Rick Leach, some of you might know his name, uh, Jim Pugh, Michael Joyce, and Johan Carlson. So, you know, the, this was the, um, the futures event, sort of, to get ATP points and then eventually get into challenger events. And um, so that was a long run that they had, and uh, Nissan was a sponsor for that entire circuit throughout the, those years. All right, so next we have this uh, event that was actually played here at Wale 85, and it was uh, my very first year. I was hired in May 1985, and this event took place in the fall of 1985. And uh, it was a $10,000 women's circuit that went from here to Kona, um, and it was part of a USTA uh, 32 women draw. And at that time, it was sponsored by Gentry Companies, the developer of this um, uh, development. Uh, back then, he was trying to promote the area and just bring interest into the, uh, this, this uh, development. It was sponsored by the Gentry Companies, and at that time, he wanted to promote this development, and, uh, which is now a gated community with uh, 200 houses. What was interesting about this event, it ran for two years, 1985 and 86, but on this, this particular year, uh, it was my very first tournament stringing uh, at a professional tournament. So, uh, and being that it was played right here, it just brings back memories. And, most people that play here don't even know that that happened because uh, it was so long ago. But uh, it is an upcoming article that I'm writing and uh, in that year, it was very interesting because in the finals, uh, we had a player that was 32 years old and she played someone half her age. So, so this next uh, history in Hawaii, I wanted to talk about the tennis weekend because although it's not happening these days, it was a pretty big event back uh, starting in 1987. And I believe it went to 2009, but I'm not sure. But uh, when it first started, it was such a big event. Um, and we had a proclamation. Uh, this is a picture of uh, Mayor Fossey uh, proclaiming uh, Tennis Weekend in Hawaii. And I believe this is uh, Kayatano when he was a lieutenant governor. So um, that was in 1988. For those of you not familiar with the Tennis Weekend, it was a uh, a two, three day event that was, uh, it started off in Turtle Bay and it was uh, workshops, it was clinics, uh, there was member club championships. It was just a lot of things just packed into one weekend. So uh, it was great when that happened. Um, I even did like a streaming seminar and a certification. So that happened back in the day and I'm sure so a lot of you remember that. But uh, for those of you that weren't there, um, hopefully it'll come back someday. Oh, and here's another picture of uh, Governor Waihei and again proclaiming Tennis Weekend in Hawaii. can't remember the years though, there were so many of those that happened, but um, I was part of that so that's why I have that picture. So, you might see some familiar faces in that picture. In 1992, we had the Davis Cup, our first Davis Cup, and it was the USA versus Argentina. It was played at the Manalani Racquet Club, and here I have the program. Um, I was stringing for Argentina, so uh, I don't know if you know some of these names like uh, Martin Haite, Alberto Mancini, Javier Frana, and Christian Minasuni. It was a first round Davis Cup match, and back then they had to erect uh, bleachers at that uh, facility. And if you know Manolani, it's not a very big uh, stadium court but they managed to pack in uh, 2,500 people, and I heard it was packed, it was sold out, so. On the US team, we had Sampras, uh, Agassi, uh, John McEnroe, and Rick Leach, so they played in that event. All right, we have our first Hawaii Open, and this is not the one that just happened a couple years, uh, these last two years, but it's the 1994 Hawaii Open, played at the Turtle Bay Hilton. It was a big tournament, it was, uh, $288,000 uh, prize money. It was a 32-man draw. It was played in January, so it was uh, like a warm-up tournament for the Australian Open. Uh, some of the notable players that played that year, Wayne Ferreira, he actually won it. 
Uh, he played Richie Renneberg in the finals. Uh, Brad Gilbert was playing still, uh, Fabrice Santoro, and uh, Patrick McEnroe. Ever since I started stringing, it was a goal of mine to string at the U.S. Open, and uh, I finally got my break in 1994. So I have here uh, my year at the 94. These are autographed cards, and I can talk a little bit about that later. And so that was 94, and that was 95. Back then, Babylot had the contract, so I was part of the Babylot stringing competition team. Uh, there were 10 of us from the U.S. and two stringers from France. What was kind of neat was we're right in the players' lounge, so we're in the thick of, you know, checking. The players would come in, drop off their rackets, but uh, whenever we're not stringing, which was kind of rare, uh, we got to go out and not really mingle with the players, but we could literally just see players coming in and out. Uh, one funny story is that, you know, because we had our credentials, maybe you can zoom in over here, all the players would have to have credentials, players, staff, anybody that worked the event. But because we're in the lounge, every time we would go out of the uh, lounge, there would be a whole line of kids waiting to get autographs to see who's coming out. And it's like, I'm walking out and they think like, who is this guy? <laughs> so it, it was kind of funny that people are like trying to check out your credentials to see, oh, should we get that guy's autograph? And, uh, I never did get to sign one though. But. Some of the players that I strung for, uh, Sergi Brugera, Richard Krychek, uh, Mike Ustik, and uh, Kimiko Date. So those are uh, some players. It's, it's random though who you get because uh, when a player drops off a racket, they'll take it in at a front desk and whoever happens to be uh, open at the time, not stringing a racket, they'll just uh, place the racket by your machine and. And then once we string that player's racket, we get that player for the rest of the tournament. So you always cheer for the players that you string for. So, But I think what was really rewarding was that uh, being there in 94 was great, but being asked to come back in 95. So it just validated that I was at least uh, able to do the job and that, um, yeah, that I was able to come a second year. Some of you that are not familiar with the, that era, in 94, Agassi and Sanchez Picario won, and in 95 it was Sampras and Graf. So, of course, you guys know Pete Sampras. Uh, Michael Chang, uh, he was always my favorite player back then. Never got to string his racket. Guillermo Vilas, that's really going back. And Stefan Edberg, Jim Courier, uh, Max Wielander. Steffi Graf. We never did see uh, Agassi though because he had his own personal stringer and bodyguard. I think he was one in the same. Boris Becker. There you go, right there. Next we have the White Koloa Challenger. It was a $50,000 tournament, men's and women. And that was played from 2001 through 2008. Um, I wasn't there for the first uh, few years, but Back in the day, Andy Roddick won the very first one. James Blake, Robbie Jeanette and Michael Russell. So those are some people that, some pros that won it. On the women's side, uh, Lilia Osterall and Melinda Sink. Um, those are a couple of names. That was a great event. I mean, being that the, the tournament was played at the hotel site, and I think that what, that's what attracted the players, is that uh, the Hilton Waikoloa did provide housing as long as they were still in a tournament. So everything was right there for them. And, um, and who wouldn't want to be in Hawaii? It was right after the Australian Open, so you would see the players come from Australia, come down to the Challenger event. All right, so from 2003 to 2008, we had a Futures event here, and it was played on the Big Island on Oahu. $15,000 tournament each time they played and some of the past champions were Todd Widom, Lester Cook, Dennis La Jolla, Daniel Yu. So these are some up-and-coming players and again this is a futures event so it was trying to get points to eventually get into bigger tournaments. So these are forms that I use when I take in a player's racket and these are specifications what they want on their racket. So. I just pulled one up here from the 2003 Futures event and look who we got. We got Rajiv Ram. Put down what kind of strings they're bringing in. Because these players will bring their own strings and they'll just tell, tell me what tension they want it at. A lot of times there's some 
there's some adjustment being made after the initial stringing. So, uh, yeah, so you never know who you might get that will be famous someday. So after the Challenger event uh, ended in 2008 at Waikoloa, it resumed in 2010 and it was called the Honolulu Challenger. So up here we have, uh, I have a poster there. And it was played here on, on Oahu in 2010 and 11 at Corp. So some of you might remember that event. Uh, and, and if you weren't there, some players uh, that played during those two years, Kevin Anderson, Grigor Dimitrov, Donald Young, Ryan Harrison, Michael Venus, still on the tour, and Sam Groth. Sam was an interesting character because he had the fastest serve on the circuit. I think he might still have the record. It's, it's uh, I think, 150 plus. It was interesting to try and see how fast he could actually hit it in person. And uh, so that was memorable. So after the Challenger moved from uh, Corp, it actually stayed on Oahu and it moved to the Kailua Racquet Club. Of course, our local player Dennis La Hoya played in that, and he had that uh, uh, match that Shane featured in one of his videos against Jack Sock. And speaking about Jack Sock, I have his work order form here. And you know, commentators uh, will make uh, mention of how low he strings his rackets. Here I have one of his work order forms, and uh, in that event he was stringing at 39. He kept his tension all the way through, so um, so it is true he does string in the 30s. Other players that played was Steve Johnson and Dennis Kudla. So, I mean, these are guys that didn't win the event, but they played. Uh, they were right in Kailua. So. And next we have the 2013 Wailea Challenger. It was there for one year. I don't know if many of you know, but uh, Kei Nishikori was here for that event. He was uh, training at IMG and he came with his coach that year. And um, he, I'm not sure what round he, I think he lost in the second round. Uh, but I have one of his work order forms. Here he has a couple rackets that he did. Uh, again, he, he played a couple matches and then um, I'm not sure who beat him back then. But uh, I'm sure that player remembers beating him. <laughs> so that year that uh, it was at Wailea, Mike Russell was the winner of that event. But uh, other players in that same year was Sam Quarry was there for that. Mark Filipousis was on the end, tail end. I think it was just playing it for fun, really. So next we have the uh, Maui Challenger. It was renamed, um, but it started off as the Maui Challenger. It was played at the Royal Lahaina Resort, and it was there for five years, from 2013 to 2017. That was the last year. That's a program of the 2017 event. Notable names, um, Tennis Sandgren, Misha Severev, Jared Donaldson, uh, Stefan Kozlov. Uh, in 2016, they actually added women to that event. So, uh, Jen Brady was playing in that event that year. Uh, Taylor Townsend, Jessica Pagula. Yeah, these are guys on the tour right now. Like uh, Kyle Edman, Michael Moe, Francis Tiafo, and other players that uh, you're hearing today. I mean, Dennis Shapovalov, uh, Mackie McDonald, Tommy Paul. You never know when you go to these events, like who's going to make it. So it was pretty cool to see them back in their uh, early days. One side note about this event is uh, at uh, the 2016 event, when it was that men's and women's event, it was the most rackets I ever strung in a tournament. So uh, it was 344 in that event. I did have to get some help on that event. I think I strung 299 and then my, my help did the rest. My record for stringing out rackets in a day was 50. I had to uh, do that in 21 and a half hours. And then I slept for an hour and a half. And the next day I had to pump out another 41 rackets in 18 hours. So uh, it's something that I'm proud of, but I don't know if I want to do that again. But you know, when you're stringing out a tournament, you just got to find that extra gear. And uh, it's not for everyone, but I, I definitely enjoy it. And, your hands take a toll, your legs take a toll, but uh, at the end of the day, it's just uh, just nice knowing that the players are playing with the rackets that you strung. Then two weeks later, we had the USA playing Germany, and it was at the Royal Lahaina, so it was perfect that it was at that site. The USA team, the Davis and the Fed Cup, they have a contract for a stringer that, that does all of their stringing, so when I do these uh, events like this, I'm always stringing for the other other teams. So I was stringing for Germany. On Germany we had Julia Gerges, Andrea Pekovic, Laria Sigmund, and Karina Withoff. 
Yeah, so they were there for that uh, event, and um, again, it was a packed event at the Royal Lahaina Resort. Right. Then in 2016, we had the Hawaii Open played here on Oahu, and both the both years was played at Corp, and it was a WTA event, and I have a poster up there. In those two years, um, well, in the first year, CC Bellis won that event. The second year, Zhuang Che. But again, you never know in these events, like uh, who's gonna make it out there. Uh, Maria Sakari would played in that event. Uh, Amanda Anisimova, Danielle Collins. Um, and at the time it was kind of exciting because uh, Nick Curio's girlfriend was playing in that tournament. In 2018 and 19, we had our tennis championships in Honolulu and that was played right here at UH. And some of the players that played in those two events or names like Misaki Doi, Asia Muhammad, uh, Kayla Day, Carolyn Dolhide. And you know, going to these matches in person, it's a lot different. I mean, even at this level, it's women, but it's like they're hitting the ball so hard. If you ever get a chance when tennis is back, definitely check it out. Even at that level, it's really worth it. And this event actually featured our own Alyssa Tobita, she played her first round match and won against Alexandra Stevenson against Dr. J's daughter. So that was pretty cool. All right, so we're moving up to pretty current stuff. In 2018 and 2019, we have the Hawaii Open. Uh, in 2018, it was played at the Blaisdell Arena, and then it moved to the Stan Sheriff uh, Arena in 2019. Um, a lot of you probably, uh, attended or at least watched it because it was televised and uh, you can see the names up there I mean Kate Nishikori, uh, Ragruza, Harrison, Vanderway, Jeannie Bouchard. Uh, some of the players on that poster didn't show up so they had to get some of our local players to fill in and I'm sure that you guys remember uh, Andre Iligan and Fook Hoon played in that event too so that was pretty cool to see our own local guys playing against some of these uh, players on the circuit. Alright, so we're going to end here with our most current event in this uh, 2020 uh, Davis Cup event, USA versus Uzbekistan. And when I was called to string for this event, I couldn't even pronounce the name of that team and I didn't know that country existed. But uh, they did have a team and they did play. In fact, that was the first, uh, or I'm sorry, that was the last professional tournament before this pandemic hit, so uh, that was actually played before everything could come back. The only player that I've heard of that played on their team was Dennis Eastman. That was uh, also quite a event because that was the Bryan Brothers' last professional tournament. So seeing them in person, right in your backyard, I mean, it was like it was showtime. I mean, everybody was looking forward to that match, and um, uh, it was, uh, I think, the highlight of that Davis Cup event. I have some pictures of players that I strung for, and if you uh, up here, Michael Chang, uh, this is Richie Renneberg, Kimiko Date at the US Open, Sam Quarry, you can see the height difference there, uh, that's Sergio Bouguera, Jack Kramer, if any of you know back in the day, Kenny Shakori. Now, this guy, you can see that I'm a little taller than him, that's Harold Solomon, and he was my favorite player growing up. So it was uh, that was at the U.S. Open, Richard Krajicek, uh, Danielle Collins, those are my boys, Raiden and Kobe. Now, Pat Cash, I mean, you guys must have heard of Pat Cash. Of course, he played with Prince, so I would know that. And then Jeannie Bouchard over there, so. So I want to thank you folks for joining and watching this video today. Um, I hope it was interesting and um, uh, reminiscing. So it's these relics and uh, memorabilia uh, that inspires me to write about uh, past tennis history and even stuff that uh, is not tennis events that I will be featuring in some of my future newsletters. So um, I want to thank Shane Cashin for and the Tennis Ninja for uh, featuring me today and sharing my involvement in tennis and you can call me a tennis geek I guess but um, yeah, anytime you want to talk tennis, um, I'm uh, happy to do so. So you can check me out at amstringy.com. You can see some of my articles or you can subscribe for my newsletter and you'll get all the stuff uh, sent right to you. 
So again, I hope to see you guys on the court. I'm missing playing league and um, can't wait for that day that we can all get out and see each other. So anyway, take care. Aloha.